In this installment, we're going to be going over the Monday NBA slate on DraftKings and FanDuel, bringing you the top plays and values. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for your Monday slate on DraftKings and FanDuel for March 20th. Before I deep dive into this very, very intriguing slate, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram um, and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about the Patreon. Uh, also, hey, Shout out, shout out to our newest Patreon member in Surge. Thank you so much uh, for signing up and continuing. We're going to continue this winning formula we got going on. And we've been pretty hot on the NCAA tournament as of uh, the first week. OK, so nine and three. And then uh, we went into that Friday with 13 and six. Uh, we hit a little bit of bump in the road with today's plays on Sunday, but we're going to bounce back um, with the the plays for next week going into March Madness. So tomorrow's going to be NBA, and then at the end of the week, we'll be into March Madness yet again, which we were killing it. All right. We were killing it, dominating that March Madness. So sign up right now. All those links will be provided down below. Before we get into the position by position breakdown, we have to go over the outs and questionables. We have a lot of guys that are on that cusp for the Monday slate. All right. Some of the outs that we got right now is going to be Jordan Cl uh, Clarkson, uh, point guard. It's going to be Colin Sexton. He's going to be out. Ta uh, Tyrese Halliburton is going to be out as well. We have a ton of Q tags. You got to stay vigilant and pay attention to Twitter or Roto World, whatever you use to get updated information on the starting lineup. Stay glued to that. We have a long list, list of questionables. Luka Doncic is questionable. Kyrie Irving, Ben Matherin, he's questionable. Chris Duarte, uh, Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, and Kevin Herter, okay? So if all these guys are out, uh, we have a ton of value opening up. I'm gonna mention some of these guys when we go through the position by position. Let's start out with the point guards. At the point guard position, we're gonna be starting off with a Houston Rocket and Kevin Porter Jr. He's finally back from his injury and he has been red hot. As you can see in the last past five games, two of them are over 48 fantasy points. And in these games, they have a couple wins here. So Houston Rockets are uh, not tanking anymore, winning some games here. And this is another spot here against the Golden State Warriors. They struggle against point guards. Let's look at the numbers. They're 23rd in points allowed, uh, allowing 28.68. They're 24th in field goals made, allowing 10.37. They're 26th in field goal percentage, allowing 45.7%. They're 25th in three-point percentage, allowing 37%. They're 26th and three points made, allowing 3.26. The 24th in rebounds, allowing 7.82. The 21st in assists, allowing 9.48 assists. And the 25th in steals, allowing 2.15. So, uh, across the board, Kevin Porter is looking like a gem in two previous matchups against the Golden State Warriors. He's averaging 42 fantasy points. So, you're getting a value here at $8,000 in salary. Love. Kevin Porter Jr. The next point guard we're going to be looking at will be Mike Conley. If Anthony Edwards out and if Rudy Gobert is out, then we're looking at a Mike Conley here who should exceed his value. Okay, He already showed up big in that game against the Chicago Bulls. 52 fantasy points in that one. He's going to have to bring back the old Mike Conley in this matchup if they're going to be without two of their stars. So like Mike Conley at this very cheap price of 5500 go to him if both of these guys and Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert are going to be out. All right, let's move on to the shooting guards. 
for the shooting guard position. Talon Horton Tucker here. Uh, shooting guard and small forward eligibility. This is what we're going to go towards. Going up against the Sacramento Kings. High pace. There's going to be a lot of points scored in this game uh, between the Jazz and the Kings. Talon Horton Tucker has looked solid as of late. That's why we're going to go towards him. And this is a spot where the Kings struggle against opposing shooting guards. All right. They are 26th in the league in points, excuse me, 29th in the league in points, allowing 32.53 points per game, 28th in the league in field goals made, allowing 11.33, 28th in field goal percentage, allowing 45.7, 30th in three points made, allowing 4.75, 25th uh, in the three-point percentage, allowing 38.2%. Uh, 28th in free throw attempts, allowing 6.22. 28th in assists, allowing 6.35. And they're 28th in steals, allowing 2.32. So, Talon Horton Tucker, if he's able to put up a nice uh, scoring performance, which he, he has done before, he scored 37 points against the Charlotte Hornets. This is that similar matchup here where it's plus-plus against opposing shooting guards. If we can get something similar to him, what he did against the Charlotte Hornets, we're cashing in very heavily at this price of $6,000. $800 in salary. So that's almost a 10x there. Love Talon Horton Tucker at that shooting guard position going up against these Kings. Okay. Uh, the next shooting guard we're going to go towards will be Josh Hart of the New York Knicks here. Uh, great acquisition right before the trade deadline. And Josh Hart has been very, very solid. 37 fantasy points against Denver, 45 against Portland, 43 against the Kings. See, uh, you see that? The Kings strolling in shooting guards. This is what I expect from Talon Horn Tucker. And this is what I expect from Josh Hart going up against these Minnesota Timberwolves here. Especially if there's no Anthony Edwards, there's going to be a big gaping hole there. Uh, Josh Hart will be able to take advantage of. He's scrappy. He he plays tough defense, and he he's, he's just all around great asset to have. The last time we played him was that game against Sacramento where he got us 43 fantasy points. So he's done he's done us pretty well so far. Love Josh Hart at six thousand dollars in salary. Let's go on to the small forwards. For the small four position, we're going back to the Houston Rockets here. Golden State Warriors, another spot that they struggle against is opposing small forwards. Across the board, the 26th in points, allowing 24.55. The 28th in field goals made, allowing 9.03. The 26th in field goal percentage, allowing 47%. The 27th in three points made, allowing 3.08. The 22nd in rebounds, allowing 9.31. 28th in assists, allowing 5.18. And 29th in steals, allowing 1.91. So, Kenyon Martin's son here, KJ Martin, uh, has a decent game. He's been uh, improving along this year. And in this matchup against the Golden State Warriors, in three previous games, he's averaging above his season average. All right? He's aver he usually averages 23. Against the Golden State Warriors, he's averaging 28.45. So there's upside for more in this matchup for KJ uh, Martin here. I like his upside. I like him to score double-digit real points. The key is, can he get the rebounds? And one of the weak spots here for the Warriors is the rebounding, the 22nd, allowing 9.31. So that's a perfect fit there. We have the possibility for a double-double for KJ Martin here in this game. Let's go towards him at this very solid salary of 5,300. Let's move on to the power forwards. Tobias Harris of the Philadelphia 76ers is the first person we want to go with at the power four position, the forgotten Philadelphia Sixter. There's Ty Tyrese Maxey, there's Joel Embiid, there's James Harden. You forget about Tobias Harris. And this is a perfect spot for him going up against these Chicago Bulls who year after year, there's two things about the Bulls. They can't shoot threes and they, they are horrible in rebounding and guarding opposing power fours and centers. So, this spot here for Tobias Harris is a great one. In previous two matchups against the Bulls, he's averaging 37 fantasy points in this. Eight more fantasy points than his season average here. So you're getting a very good price for Tobias Harris at $6,000 in salary. Has the upside to get you 30 to 40 fantasy points in this spot. Like the upside here, we're going to have to go with that. And like, like I said, 
Let's look at some of these stats. They're 29th in the league in points, allowing 22.13. They're 28th in field goals made, allowing 8.27. They're 27th in field goal percentage, allowing 50% shooting. 29th in the league in free throw attempts, allowing 5.21. And they're 26th in rebounds, allowing 10.89. 27th in assists, allowing 3.48. 30th in steals, allowing 1.54. And 27th in blocks, allowing 1.40. So this is a spot where Tobias Harris can really stuff all the stat boxes here. Like I said, his average is 17 and a half. He's averaging one steal. He's averaging almost two blocks, two assists, and eight rebounds. So love to buy us here. Harris here at six thousand dollars in salary. Let's go on to the other selection at the power forward position. That will be Ben Matherin, who is currently uh, ha has the Q tag. So pay attention to the news. If Ben Matherin is in, we're going with him. Uh, but if he is out, we're gonna go to Jordan Noara. Right. This is the backup power forward here, small forward power forward here for the Indiana, uh, Indiana Pacers. If Ben Math Matherin is out, and he's played very solidly in the games that Ben Matherin is out, he's averaging, as you can see, 34, 32, 31, and 32 in four of the last five games with Ben Matherin out. So we can go to this well of Jordan the Warrior, 5,400. I like him there. Let's move on to the centers. For the center position, Miles Turner is going to be linked upon just a little bit more here with no Tyrese Halliburton. All right, we got someone we're going to talk about the point guard position very soon, and they also have Miles Turner. Miles Turner is going to be their leader, especially defensively. Miles Turner is in a plus plus matchup against the Charlotte Hornets. Okay, they are 23rd in points, allowing 6.16.58, the 25th. And field goals made, allowing 6.75. 30th in field goal percentage, allowing almost 60% shooting from the field. 27th in rebounds, allowing 12.15. And 27th in blocks, allowing 2.23. So this is looking like a very good matchup for Miles Turner. In two previous matchups against the Charlotte Hornets, he's averaging 48 fantasy points. So absolutely insane production here in this great matchup against the Hornets. We're going to go back to that well here. Miles Turner coming back recently from injury at a nice solid price of 7300 right. At the other center position, we're going to pay up here, and that's going to be Joel Embiid. I just went over all the numbers uh, with the Chicago Bulls that they struggle against power forwards and centers. So Joel Embiid here, we're going to feel totally fine. This is my thumbnail here. I'm going to be totally fine paying up for him at $11,600 in salary. We're hopefully getting, we want something near that 70 plus range in fantasy points there. He averages 57. If we can get a 70 or more, then that's perfect for his salary and it'll be definitely uh, worth his cost. All right, let's go on to the values. For our value plays, these are mainly based on uh, the injury report. So we have to stay tuned. We got to watch out for news. The one guarantee here is going to be TJ McConnell. I alluded to him earlier. This is a perfect spot for him at the point guard position. Love him as a value play. A lock candidate here because with Tyrese Halliburton now, he is the orchestrator of the offense. He facilitates very well. He's been solid year after year as a contributor off the bench um and in certain scenarios where they need him to start he comes through uh with flying colors as you can see against philly 32 fantasy points and against the milwaukee bucks 40.6 uh fantasy points there he had a nice double double with 19 points 12 assists in that game and against philly six points nine assists two blocks two steals five rebounds filling and stuffing the stat sheet across the board tj mcconnell is a very solid play at 6300 all right kyle anderson at 7500 paying up a little bit more here but the news of rudy gobert and anthony edwards is going to loom large here for him okay if both of those guys are out we're looking at a, a spot where we can get a 40 to 50 bomb here in um in slow-mo so 47 fantasy points against chicago 54 against atlanta 40 against Brooklyn, 47 against the Kings. Slow-mo is putting together a complete game here. Not only is it points, it's rebounds, it's assists, it's blocks, it's steals. He's slow, 
but he's very, very productive. $7,500 in salary. Kyle Anderson is a steal if both of those guys are out. So stay tuned to the injury report. And then uh, last but not least, Nas Reed. We're going to wait on news on Rudy Gobert here. Um, and he's been very effective when starting at the center position. And he has some upside to really go off 64 fantasy points against the Warriors, 33 against the Charlotte Hornets. Those are some of the two times that he had opportunity to get a full allotment of minutes. So Nas Reed at 5,900 is the solid play if Rudy Gobert is out. So thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you do not forget about the Instagram and Twitter at MessingHSD. And don't forget about the Patreon. Those links will be provided down below. And don't be shy to comment, all right? Let's hear when I hear some feedback from you guys. I appreciate you. Peace out.